Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green creature deck titled Backup Plan, as we have 6 backup creatures, 2 copies of Doomscar Warrior, and 4 copies of Voldaren Thrillseeker. And this is one of the main builder rounds in the deck, a 3-mana 1-1 one, one with backup 2, so you can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature when it enters, and also grants the ability to that creature until end of turn. For 1 mana we can sacrifice it to deal damage equal to its power to any target, so that can represent a lot of damage in the late game, since it can also damage the opponent directly, and also gives our creature deck a bit of removal, which is nice. And Thrillseeker has some great synergies in this deck, such as the one with Iron Apprentice. It's essentially a 1-1, thanks to that plus 1 plus 1 counter, and when it dies, if it had counters on it, we can put those counters onto target creature we control. So let's say we play our Thrillseeker with Apprentice in play, and we have a spare mana, then now we could end up with a 3-3 Apprentice, sacrifice it dealing 3 damage, and then move all 3 of its counters maybe back onto the Thrillseeker, so on the following turn we could deal 4 damage with it and keep the chain going. And then we also have the Beast Caller, which will passively pick up more plus one counters as we cast more creature spells. And then at some point we could also sacrifice it, dealing a lot of damage, and then moving all of its plus one counters onto a different creature. Then we also have two copies of the Ozolith to synergize with all these plus one plus one counters. Also gives us a nice mana sink in the late game. Then we also have two copies of the new Picnic Ruiner, a 2-2 creature that gains double strike until end of turn when it attacks if we have a creature with power 4 or greater can potentially include itself, and Double Strike also scales very nicely with any additional plus one counters, so putting all our eggs in the Ruiner basket could also work out nicely. And then the Stolen Goodies Adventure is also pretty nice in the late game, letting us distribute three plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures we control, so that can also maybe combine with the Thrill Seeker to deal more damage. And then we've got the full set of Gala Greeters, can also passively pick up more plus one counters over time as more creatures enter, maybe gain some life against the aggressive red decks, and also create tapped treasure tokens. And we'll need those treasure tokens if we want to ramp out our gruff triplets. A 6-drop that's a 3-3 Trampler joined by another two tokens that essentially have the same name and the same abilities. When gruff triplets dies, put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to its power on each creature we control named gruff triplets. So we start out with three 3-3 three, three creatures, Creatures. Then if one of them dies, we'll end up with a pair of 6-6 six, six creatures, and then if one of those dies, we might end up with a 12-12 Trampler. And then Gruff Triplets also has amazing synergy with Thrillseeker, especially if we already have a Triplets in play. Use the Thrillseeker's backup 2 to put 2 plus 1 counters on Gruff Triplets, can now sacrifice it dealing 5 damage, and put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the remaining 2 Triplets, ending up with a pair of 8-8 eight, eight Tramplers, and that paired with the 5 damage is likely enough to end the game. Then we also have two copies of Doomscar Warrior as another backup creature. This is only backup one, but the ability can provide a nice bit of card advantage. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, we get to look at that many cards from the top of our library, reveal a creature or land card from among them, and put it into our hand. So that can also help us find the triplets or the thrill seeker to assemble these powerful combos. Then the partners also make a lot of sense, since we can easily increase their power through our various plus one counters, and then the partners in turn can give our other creatures more plus one counters and haste until end of turn. And then a two copies of Kodama is also a nice way to give our creatures trample, especially a large beast caller can benefit from Kodama, as we now get to trample over thanks to the plus one counters counting as modifications. And then whenever a modified creature deals damage to the opponent, we get to search our library for a basic land and put it in play tapped, so that's potentially another way of ramping into our gruff triplets ahead of schedule. And then we've got a few other artifacts here, two copies of Simeon Simulacrum, and then we already mentioned our Iron Apprentice at one mana. These are all ways of potentially triggering our Teething Wormlet, which can also play quite well alongside Ozolith, giving it two plus one counters right away, gaining us a little bit of extra life against Moderat can also be quite helpful. Not playing the full playset, since we don't have a ton of artifacts overall, and of course the more Wormlets, the less likely we are to have an artifact to go with it, but I found two copies to still be quite helpful, giving us an additional one mana play, which is very much needed when playing against other aggro decks. And then Kumano also makes perfect sense here, as a nice aggressive card that will generate additional plus one counters to go with the rest of our deck. And that pretty much sums it up. Simul Simulacrum, another artifact creature to go with the Wormlet that can give us more plus one counters, and can also unearth it from the graveyard. And then our mana base has two copies of Mirex, which can also be a nice late game ability to generate artifact tokens, which will in turn trigger the Wormlet, so that's another nice synergy. And then plenty of red-green dual lands, and then the channel lands for added interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. 
Double Apprentice could set up a nice turn with Kodama if we can connect and get to search up a bunch of lanes. I think I still play an Apprentice now, even though Beast Caller maybe wants us to hold some creatures. But now maybe the curve of Beast Caller into Kodama could be excellent. Don't really mind seeing Thalia. And land is good. So yeah, play Beast Caller. Pass it back. And then hope to set up a successful attack. Vanguard grows the team, but our opponent's still attacking. So we will be able to hit back with Beast Caller, get a land if we want to. And that seems good to me. Then we'll have Kodama and Apprentice back. Could even set up a sneaky double block where Apprentice dies in first strike. We get to move the counter to Kodama. And then next turn we'll have a lot of options. Picnic Ruiner with Double Strike could also potentially get multiple lands with Kodama out. It's going to be an ossification next, that's too bad. So now we can set up our tricky double block. Since yeah, we could have put Apprentice on Thalia, Kodama on Initiates, and then have a 4-4 essentially for regular damage. Now we take 8. And we're on the back foot. But we can double spell Gala Greeters and Simon Simulacrum, potentially. And then what does Gala Greeters do? Could go for a plus one counter here. Maybe next turn gain life. And then Simulacrum. Probably doesn't want to put counters on itself, since the Initiate could maybe blow up artifacts. I guess Apprentice is a good place to put them, even though that could also die. At least we get to move the counters. And then we still have Beast Caller to hold off Thalia, hopefully. Yeah, we'd have another Exile effect, so we're in trouble. Entrapped Adversary to pump the team, that's very good. Still doesn't get them past Beast Caller, at least. Is this a Convoke? That would be bad for us. No Convoke, and another Gala Greeters. Yeah, let's just get the Greeters going. I'll be patient on the adventure from Picnic Ruiner. And then for now, start with plus one counters. And go with a life gain and more plus one counters, don't really need the treasure. Another Vanguard. Okay, could see an all-out attack, but I think we're equipped to deal with it. Picked up a land. Yeah, let's just adventure here. And then where to put the counters? Mostly the apprentices. Even though again initiate can destroy them if they attack and train. But then we'll be able to move the counters, so maybe. One and two. And pass a turn. Another adversary. Oof, this one they can sink four mana into. Yeah, that's bad. We'll see if they finally go for it here. They do. Okay, so we'll have to make use of this first strike trick, I think. So let's say we put Apprentice on Thalia. We'll be able to move three counters onto, let's say, the Beast Caller. So it's a 10 powered creature, so it can finish off Adversary. And then if we deal four damage to the Vanguard, that's gonna end up dying. So is this our block? Yeah, we're essentially jumping with Greeters, Simulacrum, and Apprentice, but we're killing Vanguard, killing Adversary, get to keep a large Beast Caller, and we still have Gala Greeters. This looks reasonable to me. 
Just double checking. Could also double block the Vanguard, take it out. I think Allied Greeters will provide more value long term. So counters on Beast Scholar. And then counters on Gala Greeters. Ooh, nice Gruff Triplets to the rescue. We'll triple trigger Gala Greeters. Do I attack with both? Could leave one extra back to play around another removal spell. I think I'm gonna go for it, try and get this game over with. falls to six. So once again Thalia is gonna make it hard for the opponent to attack since first strike would grow the triplets. So yeah, this should work out. First strike happens, grow the other triplets. And then we'll still trade with Initiate and then end up with a 12th power triplet. Using First Strike to your advantage. And then now we could unearth Simulacrum. And that's more than enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems decent. Turn 1, Kumano. Turn 2, Beast Scholar. Turn 3, Thrill Seeker, so a nice curve to start out. And then turn four we can maybe adventure the Picnic Ruiner as well. It's gonna be a Danik 2-3. Can block our etching unless Thrill Seeker puts its counters on it, which seems reasonable here. So we can keep up the pressure. Even though we won't be able to deal as much damage with Thrill Seeker in the future. Bones at 11. Is there a Brutal Cathar in our future? Just an officer. And then it attacks. If our opponent keeps up two mana, it's either reinforcements or could also be virtue of loyalty, maybe make disappear. So there's a few things they could still have. Could go with another thrill seeker here and then put counters on, let's say, beast caller. Because then if I sag beast caller, we can even move its counters elsewhere. So we've got quite a bit of flexibility. And if they counter here, I can still sack Thrill Seeker, kill Officer, get in for 9. But that resolved. Is there any chance they have some instant speed removal here? Doesn't seem all that likely. I guess I Ganjo they could still channel for 2 mana, so that's a reason to put counters on etching. Let's try that. My opponent had to destroy evil of all things. That's too bad. So, etching down. And then I guess we'll sank the new Thrill Seeker, so we get in for 6. But yeah, that was a setback. Could have gone less all-in on one creature, but then could have run into a Naiganjo instead. Skrull if we don't mind. And an Adlin. We'll see if they attack, they do. Now we could still use Picnic Ruiner to put counters on Thrill Seeker, attack all out, and then yeah, we should still be presenting lethal here. Just put them all on Thrill Seeker, attack, and if they block Thrill Seeker, we just sacrifice it to deal four upstairs. So they basically have to chump Beast Scholar to have a chance. And they didn't, and our opponent dies. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? Turn 1, Kumano. Turn 2, Beast Caller. Yeah, we're off to a decent start. Pretty far from casting the triplets, so we'll need our Gala Greeters to help there. 
but uh, double beast caller to start out. Cheap creatures to give us more counters is good. And then eventually we'll have Mirex to make more artifacts for Wormlet as well. Opponent with a mono white aggro deck here. Officer into Vanguard. And they're gonna hang back. Found a land. Excellent. So we'll play Beast Caller into Wormlet. And then next turn Simulacrum will trigger Wormlet as well. Don't mind trading for both creatures here using Beast Caller. Still get to move the counters elsewhere. Opponent takes it. We'll see if they have some removal here. Yep, Brutal Cathar is effective. Exiles are creatures, so we don't get to move the counters. Still going for Simulacrum. 4-4 four, four is already large enough. Could make another 4-4. Four, four. And send everyone. Opponent trades falls to 4. And an Adlin is next. But uh, can our opponent afford to attack is a question. They do not. So now at the very least I can activate Mirex, triggering Wormlet, does not trigger Beast Caller. And then I would have two artifacts, so no Death Touch yet, but probably not super relevant. So yeah, play a land, and then if we attack all out, then opponent does have one potentially profitable block. But then they're chumping my other two creatures, which is probably good enough. Ooh, blocking the Wormlet is not going to work out for them. Since we can use Mirex here as kind of a trick. And that's why it's in the deck. And counter Zombie Scholar. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? It's um, missing a land or two. Mirex only makes red temporarily, so that could be an issue, but Gala Greeters can make more treasure, so we'll see how this works out. So turn two, we already have to make a pretty important decision. Now we can play the mountain, and then... Yeah, I wouldn't mind playing the Gala Greeters and have it survive. Even though it's a tall ask. Let's try it. If they immediately take out Beast Caller, we also don't get any value, so both are fine. Opponent with a Sunset Revelry, losing one life so they can gain four. Okay, at least we get to keep our greeters. So now we're looking at Beast Caller. Get a counter on the greeters, and then Wormlet make a treasure, so Wormlet also grows. So we get full value. Not really interested in trading here. And then next turn we could maybe get our attack in with the backup. Opponent takes out Beast Caller, get to move the counter. And then we can make it Greeters, so when I play Warrior we can make Treasure to grow Wormlet. Another Wormlet will have to wait. And then where do we back up? Probably the Greeters to play around another Virtue of Persistence. Although it's already got kind of a target on its back. I think it's still reasonable. Back with both. And then hopefully find a land with the ability so we can keep developing our board. Okay, Rockfall Veil looks good. Play another Wormlet. And 
then now we get a plus one counter. So maybe in hindsight could have gone with a different approach. So we ended up with two four fours. Although if they have another virtue, they probably take out the warrior anyways. Opponent is playing Esper, so we can certainly expect some sweepers in our future. Also, Lith was actually an excellent draw. So we can play it triggering the two wormlets, getting two counters each. And then still play Simulacrum, which would trigger Greeters, get two counters. And then counters go probably on the Doomscar Warrior, so we can trample over and get more value. Could also go for Treasure Token to give us a bit more mana for next turn. Since uh, Puns may be chumping Greeters anyways. And attack all out. So Doomscar Warrior generates more value. Puns just on damage control here. Falls to 12. And we get to dig very deep for a Thrill Seeker. So that's one way to end the game, even if our opponent's got a bunch of chum blockers back. Tainted Indulgence, pointing maybe towards a Reanimator strategy. Question is, can we take them out in this upcoming turn? Our opponent discarding Sunfall, so they definitely have another one in hand. And with the Thrill Seekers, that shouldn't be too difficult if it resolves. And our opponent concedes before we need to play it out here. All right, I'll take it. Get to a rank up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a somewhat awkward hand. Don't get to play turn one Kumano. We've got double Ozolith. But maybe it's still good enough. Turn two Kumano and then turn three. I guess it would be nice to have Ozolith in play first. So this might be a turn three Kumano. It's gonna be pretty slow. I'll give it a shot. We'll figure it out. Up against the red aggro. So immediately making one large creature that they cannot burn could be quite useful. Wormlet's interesting. So now that's kind of an incentive to play Wormlet, play Kumano. Next turn play Ozolith, immediately getting two counters. Or we can just play Kumano. And then next turn go Ozolith plus Wormlets. I guess the reverse is possible too. We either get an extra counter from Kumano or an extra counter from Ozolith entering, which is probably better if they don't keep up mana. It's kind of an interesting situation. I think I should use my red mana. Playing Picnic Ruiner feels a bit weak, but that's also an option. And then wait on Kumano until later. I think we'll be able to use the Adventure. So let me just go Kumano plus Wormlets, and then if they take out Wormlets, so be it. We might draw a 3-drop that I want to cast instead. If not, I'll maybe waste a plus 1 counter, but play also Lith to grow Wormlet. Opponent's got a Felden on 2. Alright, another Wormlet is perfect. So now we get to add an extra counter. And then also let's trigger both. This is kind of the dream start against Monored. And sure, we'll attack. I think we can outrace. Next turn with the lands, maybe use the adventure. Can also activate Ozolith. A Witch Docker Frenzy could still be effective here with three attackers. Do they have it? Looks like it. Okay, that's too bad. We'll lose our Wormlets, so now we're. Potentially still in a bit of trouble. Mirex also helps with the Wormlets. But let's adventure. So it can go two and one. That way Wormlet is out of range from another Frenzy. Attack for ten. And then next turn we could activate Ozolith, grow etching some more. So if they have another Frenzy for Etching, they'll still need a blocker for Wormlet. 
It's gonna be a monstrous rage. Seven, eight damage coming across. Another monstrous rage is plus four, so that's twelve. One short. Yeah, as it turns out, every point matters. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing a one drop, but I'll still give it a shot. Some quality twos. Facing planes. And turn to adversary. Okay, we've got triplets, so we definitely want to try and make as much mana as possible with the greeters. So what to do on turn two? Could just be greeters, and we'll see if they want to trade or if they have removal. Could also start with Beast Caller, which I'm probably fine to trade for Adversary. Although then it's going to be a while before I start making treasure. So, yeah, let's just play the Greeters. And then if we can save Thrill Seeker until after playing Triplets, that would be nice too. Opponent sadly has the Brutal Cathar, so we wouldn't be making any treasure. So in that case... Could play Beast Caller and then next turn Thrill Seeker pay the one. Which I don't hate, even though it's less mana efficient right now. That way we can maybe free the Gala Greeters by taking out Brutal Cathar. It's gonna be a Knight Errant Convoked. Okay, can only find one and two drops, finds a Vanguard. So next up, could make the Thrill Seeker play we described. And then, if I put counters on Beast Caller, it would go up to a 5-5, I can attack. And then, after damage, still sacrifice it either on Knight Errant or Brutal Cathar. And then I get to move three counters onto Thrill Seeker, so it's kind of loaded to potentially go again. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I'll hang on to Mirex in case we need it for triple green on triplets. So attack. Opponent takes it. And yeah, let's go for Brutal Cathar. Counters on Thrill Seeker. And then next turn, by making a treasure, we get closer to triplets. Another Knight Errant, so okay. So we'll definitely need the triplets to take over the late game. Adlin and Thalia. So this turn, B Scholar plus Simulacrum. Don't think we're activating Thrill Seeker anywhere. Make a treasure. And then where to put the counters from Simulacrum? Is also an interesting question. If I put them on Thrill Seeker, that's gonna be pretty big, although not the best if our opponent's got another Brutal Cathar. So maybe put them on Beast Caller, so then if it dies, we get to move all its counters elsewhere. And then for now, hang back. Don't think we need to get too aggressive. Skrelv, of course, can potentially enable some unblocked attacks in the future. Is this a third Convoke? Looks like it. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of card advantage for us to fight through. Third Knight Errant indeed. Finding Vanguard and Adversary, which can also pump the team. Okay, so now what? Now let's say we... Trade Beast Caller, three more counters on Thrill Seeker, that can now attack for seven. So it's potentially threatening the lethal already. So I don't actually hate this. All counters on Thrill Seeker. So now, let's say we were to attack with potentially everyone. Let's say we play triplets first, trigger Gallagreter some more, 
We'll have the mana to still sacrifice Thrill Seeker if I attack all out and our opponent doesn't block Thrill Seeker. They're still taking at least 9 damage. And then a Thrill Seeker sacrificed is 7, 16. Kumano puts them to 1. So very close to being lethal. But not quite. And then dealing that last point is going to be tricky, especially with Adversary having a lifelink. But I'm not hating that sequence. So play triplets. And we get all three modes. So maybe I don't attack with Simulacrum and Greeters and only send Thrill Seeker here. Opponent takes it. So yeah, we've got seven damage at the ready. So I think I hang on to my one mana instead of playing Kumano. And then something else we could do is shooting our own triplets just to grow the author pair. Not sure if that's going to be relevant. Thalia, that's fine. And a Vanguard. Opponent is attacking with our lifelinker. Can't really shoot any creatures because of Skrelv. So let's line up some blocks. So Simulacrum can trade for Adversary. Now I guess what I could do to prevent a life gain is block with triplets, shoot my own triplets with Thrill Seeker. That way they don't gain life and I grow my triplets. Problem is a 6-6 six, six triplet still trades for a 6-powered Knight Errant. So that's not ideal. So what to do about that? I think in that case... Triplets on Adversary. Simulacrum can jump Adlin. Take 12 plus 3 is a 15. And then we get to grow both triplets next turn. Point will be at 16. But we can make a pretty substantial attack. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Again, just double checking if I blow up my own triplets here. Have a pair of 6-6 six, six triplets. Could trade for Adlin. Eat the token. And then have a 12 power triplets left. But then we don't have Thrill Seeker anymore. Maybe that's still better. Uh, let's try it. And then before damage, Thrill Seeker, my own triplets. So we're at six, go to 12 power triplets. And Iron Apprentice is a draw. So if we play Apprentice, we trigger Greeters. Still have a 4 power first striking Thalia back. So if Triplets attacks, opponent has to jump with at least Vanguard. If they only jump with Vanguard, then Kumano can still finish them off. If I attack all out, our opponent's got 3 blockers. Block, block, 2 toughness in front of Triplets. Yeah, that should do it. So, could play Apprentice first if we'd like. Don't think it's really going to matter since uh, opponent will block greeters with Thalia anyway. So might as well gain two life. Yeah, this should work out. Guaranteed to get in for 10 damage. And then Kumano is exactly enough to close out the game. For opponent double blocks... That doesn't make a difference since we trample for the same amount with Simulacrum dealing 2 damage. So that works. And 1 damage to close out the game. 
Yeah, that certainly was a close one, and the triplets play seemed to have worked out. Not sure if it was the optimal sequence, but it was pretty fun to try out. All right, and we get to claim a new sleeve as well here. Very nice. So we got to see our red-green backup deck in action. And yeah, the deck is pretty decent, especially against these white creature decks. We can usually go a little bit bigger. Once the board stalls out, we can do some interesting things with Thrill Seeker to try and close out the game. And as a bonus, we even got to see more of Gruff Triplets in action in this video compared to the one where I had four copies of Triplets in the deck. So that was also a nice change of pace. Of course, we never got to see Thrill Seeker putting counters on Triplets to begin with, which is the main combo why we have Triplets in the deck, being able to have a 5-5 triplets, sacrifice it, and then put 5 counters on the remaining copies can be very nice indeed. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.